moments ago. The big story really today, one of them at least, is about Doug Ford and the fact that he went into the legislature yesterday and defended his position to push through a bill slashing Toronto City Council. The court told him that that wasn't legal, that he could not do that. He went in yesterday and said that he absolutely is going to forge through with it. Well, this morning there were lots of protesters at the legislature and we are lucky enough to be able to speak to one from Toronto, Michaela Murphy. Michaela, good morning. How are you this morning? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much. Tell me about the protests this morning. Um, was it really organized or did you just go by yourself? Uh, it was actually yesterday morning. Yesterday. Um, I went uh, I went by myself. I, I received an email letting me know that um, you know, there was going to be an opportunity to pack the galleries to show the Ford government our feelings about what he was trying to do. So I just walked over to Queen's Park and uh, got in line to um, try and get into the gallery so that I could observe what he was going to be doing. Now, we ran some video earlier today on the show, on the morning show and earlier today, about um, people in the gallery and uh, police officers, security people actually coming into the gallery and handcuffing people. Were you one of those people? No. Um, I was, as I said, there was a long lineup. There were hundreds of people trying to get in. We had to go through security and uh, check cell phones and all that sort of thing. So I was actually next in line to go into the gallery and suddenly the security people uh, um, pulled the cross and said we can't go in and that's when the disruption was happening in the gallery and then they kicked everybody out. So at that so point, I didn't get a chance to actually go in. So at that point when they told you you couldn't go in, did you know that the disruption had started or did, did they give you a reason? Yeah, they told us that people were sh making noise in the gallery and the speaker had made an order to clear the gallery. But I didn't know that people were being arrested at that point. And with regards to the reason behind most people were there, yourself included, of course, why did you show up? Uh, well, I was there because, not because of the... Um, legislation calling for the Toronto City Council to be cut in half. That wasn't the issue for me anymore. When Doug Ford announced that he was going to use the notwithstanding clause in order to push through this legislation, that alarmed me greatly. And I just, I wrote letters, but that didn't feel like enough. And I just felt that I had to be there to show physically by my presence how, how strongly I just this idea of him using the notwithstanding clause. What, what concerns Instead you so much about? Instead of going through the process of an appeal. Because he did say he was going to go through the appeal. What scares you so much about him using the notwithstanding clause? Well, the notwithstanding clause basically overrides our rights that are enshrined in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's a mechanism that is there. I'm not saying it's not legal for him to use it. But the idea of that notwithstanding clause was intended to be an extraordinary measure that would only be used in specific circumstances. That it has not been used ever in the province of Ontario is an indication of how extraordinary circum the circumstances should be before that gets used. Basically what happened was the judge ruled against their legislation and um, instead of, you know, of course, sometimes people disagree with what judges say. The whole idea of the judicial system is that there's an appeals process. And Doug Ford chose rather than, yes, he said he was going to appeal it, but he said that this was an issue of such urgency that Procore invoked the notwithstanding clause. What I fail to understand is what is it that is so urgent to all Ontarians that this legislation that is specific to the City of Toronto Council has to get pushed through immediately. Well, I think that's a really good point that you're making, Michaela, because, of course, it's something of interest to all of us who live in Ontario. But as you said, it's a very specific situation for Toronto proper. And, and a lot of people are wondering what the big 
commotion is about, what's the urgency that he feels the need to, in an election campaign for municipal elections, he feels it's absolutely an emergency to get this done. Right. And the other thing that's really interesting is when the judge made his ruling earlier this week, he actually said that if this had been, if this legislation had been passed to take place it, during the next municipal election, that there would not be any kind of uh, contravention of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms or the Constitution. So basically, all Doug Ford and his government had to do was to wait until after the, this, com this upcoming municipal election and then introduce the legislation again to make it for four years from now. Um, there is no urgency other than the urgency that, he's, that he says exists. And, and the other thing that I have to say is that I'm really concerned that it seems that the entire Progressive Conservative Caucus and Cabinet are standing behind him on this, and I find that very disturbing. Especially that someone publicly. someone like Carolyn Maroney, who is the Attorney General and a lawyer, Christine Elliott, who is a Cabinet Minister and a lawyer, that these people who should understand the rule of law and have a respect for the judicial process and understand that the judicial system is there to, to check the powers of the legislative branch of government. I can't believe that they are in good conscience supporting this legislation. And especially because they were his opponents in the election. Yes, and I know of a number of people who voted conservative in the last election who said, well, we don't really like Doug Ford, but we we like a conservative government, and we think everybody else will keep him in check. The more moderate members of the government will keep him in check and not let him do ridiculous things. And here we see them standing back while he invokes the notwithstanding clause for a trivial matter and 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 lambastes a judge and says that he's a radical activist you know that he doesn't he clearly doesn't understand that democracy involves not just the legislative branch but also the judicial branch of government as a protest and i wonder where ross romano is on this i know i live in toronto but i own a house in the sioux i'm planning to move back there within the next couple of years Ross Romano will be my member of parliament and or member of provincial parliament. And uh, I'm concerned that he seems to have also supported this measure. I've sent him a letter, but I haven't heard back from him yet. We've also requested uh, his presence and haven't heard back yet either, Michaela. Um, have you heard any word on what's happened to the people who were arrested, the protesters who were arrested? No, all I know is they were taken out in handcuffs. And actually, the 70-plus-year-old 70, 70 woman yes. uh, was my neighbor, so I know her. And she's just a normal, regular person who cares. So were these protesters being, uh, obviously, they were being vocal because they were protesting. Yes. Were they being belligerent? Were they cursing? Were they being abusive? As far I wasn't there. I wasn't right. in the gallery. But... From what I heard from people who actually were in the gallery was that they were basically just calling, they were calling out, calling, uh, I think they were calling Doug Ford a bully and they were saying this isn't democracy and we are the people and we don't agree. Now, that's against the rules. You're not supposed to do that when you're in the gallery and you're supposed to remain quiet. Um, and most of the time people do that. I know that there are people who will say, well, they were breaking the rules, so they, you know, they deserve to be. In a case like this, where the government is taking such extraordinary measures to trample our rights, to, to override the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, what else are we supposed to do? If I had been in that gallery, I can tell you I would have been standing right there with the woman who was arrested. Do you feel at because this point... Because that, there was, it was completely wrong. What they're doing is completely wrong. Do you feel at this point as an Ontarian, as a voter, as a protester, that you were heard this morning or yesterday morning? 
Oh, I don't think the Ford government heard anything. You know, they they have no respect for anybody who opposes or speaks against them. Doug has made it. Doug Ford has made it clear that he, what he's doing is following the wishes of the 2.3 million people who voted for him. He keeps repeating that, that he was elected because 2.3 million people voted for him. Those are the only people he cares about. He has no understanding of the idea that as the premier of the province, he is supposed to be making decisions in the best interests of everyone. And to and, be an example um, as majority, to how... You know, the majority rules, maybe, that yes, that's true, but we also live in a democracy in which the rights of the minority must be considered. And they're not doing that in this case. Uh, just before we let you go, Michaela, do you have any sense of the appeal and what's going to happen with that going forward? In my mind, appeals take months. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but that's my experience too. I mean, you know, democracy takes time. It does. And sometimes you have to wait to get what you want. If it goes through the appeal system and the judge's ruling is overturned, that means that it would be okay for the Ford government to reintroduce their legislation. And while I might not like it, I would be fine with that because they had followed the process and got the ruling and made their argument, you know, they make their arguments and, and you go with whatever that's democracy well you wonder if they're taking such dramatic um steps on an issue that is certainly not disastrous or in any way an emergency level situation what else are they going to use that for yeah that's the scary part and doug ford said i won't be shy about he calls it a tool in his toolbox Mm. You know, he has no, he just doesn't understand. This is, this is the charter of rights and freedoms. This is the constitution. It isn't a tool. Michaela, thank you so much for taking time and um, let us know if bar, there are any further developments. Oh, I will. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. Thank you, Michaela. Thanks so much. Michaela Murphy in Toronto yeah. protester yesterday morning against the provincial PC party and specifically Doug Ford. We have more top story right after this.